want to, Mike, I want to talk to you and just go around the table. Um, Leslie Stahl last night interviewed uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and it's going about as well for Leslie Stahl on Twitter as you would expect. Um, you know, 60 Minutes, uh, other, uh, other uh, news outlets have, have long interviewed um, um, people with whom uh, editorially they they severely disagree. Uh, I, I'm, I'm reading and world uh, leaders. World, yeah, yeah. I mean, world leaders who who uh, hold horrific views. Um, Norm Warnstein wrote, uh, "I've known Leslie Stahl for more than 40 years. Worked alongside her for many election weeks. She has been a great journalist, but this is a disgraceful, cringeworthy performance. Uh, shame, uh, shameful uh, for her." Uh, John Harwood, I respect Leslie Stahl in 60 Minutes, but airing this is garbage. I could go down the list. Um, so I, I ask this again, knowing Leslie, liking Leslie, respecting, respecting her. She's her. an extraordinary journalist, and she has been for, for a long time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, what are your thoughts about putting her on 60 Minutes, putting Marjorie Taylor Greene on 60 Minutes. And by the way, this is not a leading question. I think this is an important debate to have. If you have a woman who's considered the second most important person in the House of Representatives because Kevin McCarthy has made her that, she's a person that helped Kevin McCarthy become Speaker, then I'm sure 60 Minutes and Leslie Stahl are thinking, well, if she's that powerful, Americans need to know what she thinks. On the other side, you have a lot of people saying she should have never been given that platform. But what are your thoughts? Well, I did not see the interview, Joe. I have enormous respect for Leslie, who I've known for many, many years. Uh, I would be in favor of having her on, Marjorie Taylor Greene, to hear her, to have people listen to what she's saying, to listen to how deeply sick she is. What a distorted view of America she has. What a distorted view of who we are that she has. I would want people to have that information so that they could make a judgment on her. The larger issue, I would think, and this is going to be for historians, is our obsession, our media obsession with people like this, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, people like Donald Trump. And our obsession with him is decades old, and look where it's brought us. And but still, the bottom line is I want that information out there and available to mm -hmm. the public so they can listen to it, so they can measure it. Some people are going to say, oh, yeah, she's great. I think a large number of people, the majority of people are going to listen to what she says and say she's mentally ill and deeply dangerous. Well, with Jonathan Lemire, uh, we Donald Look Trump, Donald Trump is right now early on certainly seems likely. Uh, to uh, be the Republican nominee. Reporters are going to be interviewing Donald Trump. Donald Trump has talked about terminating the Constitution. Donald Trump led a riot on January the 6th, inspired a riot on January the 6th. Donald Trump uh, praises the people who beat the hell out of cops uh, and uh, defecated on the Capitol and tried to overturn an election. So we're going to be we're going to be interviewing Donald Trump. So I do. You know, we never we never even mentioned Marjorie Taylor Greene's name on this show when she was a backbencher. I wasn't going to give anybody oxygen for saying crazy things if they weren't relevant. She's now relevant, absolutely, just like Donald Trump is relevant. So I guess we could all like avert our eyes and pretend she's not there, but she is there. And if she is there and she's the second most powerful Republican in the House, do we not need to hear from her? Yeah, the Trump comparison is a good one. And I will say that what leapt to my mind as well, because whether it's on this show or in my reporting or even tweeting, if I'm like tweeting something that Donald Trump says or advising the fact that he's going to have a news conference, you get a deluge of people who say, well, don't give him oxygen, don't give him oxygen, ignore him, ignore him. Well, guess what? If we ignore him, he's not going to go away. Yes, we can't play mm -hmm. his game. We don't want to dance to his tune. We have to do it responsibly. And that is what we are trying to do each and every day. And I think the media has gotten better at this. I think there were real mistakes made in the 2015-2016 campaign, giving him 
giving unfettered airtime with no fact checking, with no context provided. We as the media fell short. We have gotten better. Are we perfect? No. But dramatic improvements throughout his time in office where he would be not taken in real time. There would be fact checking provided. There would be context provided. There would be analysis provided. And we would, if, if we were airing a speech, the Chiron at the bottom would be replying in real time those fact checks or an anchor would dip in and out. Same with the written word, that necessary context to call him out on his lies, to say what he is doing. And the same principle applies here for this congresswoman, who now is, whether people like it or not, an extremely influential voice in the Republican yeah. Party. It is worth hearing from her. We just need to do it in a smart, contextual way. People need to know. People need to know. And if she thinks, well, and we'll play you a clip. Yeah. Well, why don't we play a clip? Uh, uh, Leslie tried to talk policy with MTG. Here's an example of that. Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, says that if we don't raise the debt ceiling, um, that this country will be thrown into an economic and financial catastrophe. And so I'm asking you if you're willing to risk that. <laughs> you know what's put us in an economic catastrophe is, again, the people that have spent $31 trillion that forced this situation to happen. Well, wait a minute. Trump is as much responsible for that as any. I said everybody. Right. Republicans, right. Democrats. Okay. It was all before I got here. Would you be willing to vote for compromise? In other words, raise some taxes? I don't think we have a revenue problem in Washington. We have a spending problem. You know something? That's glib. That's glib. That, what does that mean? The two sides have to come together and hammer it out. Cut spending. Both, <laughs> Both well, sides need to cut spending. Where do you yeah. want to cut it? COVID bailout money and a lot of green energy spending. But are you willing to let us go into default? No. I've always said I wouldn't do that. So would you compromise? It depends. On taxes. <laughs> no, you I'm won't. not raising taxes. All right, so, so much of that is mainstream Republican, including the part where you talk about a $31 trillion uh, uh, national debt, and you don't primarily blame Donald Trump, who raised the debt more than, you know, presidents the, of the first 220 years, first 210 years uh, of this republic. But that's, that's mainstream Republican. But, of course, it went off the tracks right here. The Democrats are a party of pedophiles. I would definitely say so. They support grooming children. They are not pedophiles. Why would you say that? Democrats, so Democrats support, even Joe Biden, the president himself, supports children being sexualized and having transgender surgeries. Sexualizing children is what pedophiles do to children. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's important. This is what they do at 60 Minutes. They bring, you know, a, a person like this or a foreign leader. They go into situations where they ask the questions and show their viewers what they're dealing with. Right. And I think she did a, a, an exceptional job, as usual, just because and I, you know, I take issue with those tweets and with both those people. If they sat down with Marjorie Taylor Greene, could they do it as well? Because it should be done. We do need to cover these people. We need to show all sides of the story. And I'm talking about Democrats, Republicans, people in the far right, Trumpers who wouldn't actually, some would argue, don't represent the true conservative right. Republican Party and movement. Right. And I, I don't understand what what she did wrong. She did a, an interview with Marjorie so, Taylor Greene. So Mike Barnacle, of course, uh, and, and we've talked about it here an awful lot, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, has said horrific things. Uh, I think she she is uh, a sign of just how badly things have gone. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, 60 Minutes interviewed Charles Manson, and 60 Minutes has That's interviewed one uh, one terrible person after another terrible and person. People. And I'm not. And 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 so if they if they interview Charles Manson. They can interview a member of Congress, uh, and and if you don't want to watch, you can do what Mika and I did and, and not watch until this morning. 
Uh, uh, but if you want to watch, you can watch and and actually understand some of the craziness that's a, that has infected the Republican Party. And that just may be good to understand what American democracy is up against. You know, Joe, I would submit that there's a larger story here in the appearance of this totally unhinged woman. And the largest story is that she represents a lot of today's Republican Party. And many members of that party, specifically in the House of Representatives, are probably afraid of her because of what she says, when she says it, and she does not mm -hmm. care what she says. So she's put her stamp on one of the two major parties, two major political parties in this country. And that stamp right now is indelible. I think that's the larger story. And I'm glad she was on 60 Minutes so more people could get an idea of who she yes. is, basically implying, inferring that the President of the United States, one of the most normal, honorable human beings you will ever meet, regardless of your politics, is a pedophile favorite. I mean, it is absolutely obscene, and she represents the obscenity. Yeah, so, and, and I just, I, I want to just, uh, I, I've been searching, I saw 60 Minutes um, in Charles Manson, I see, I see 60 Minutes uh, Australia, uh, I, I'm, I'm also seeing right now um, that, that Charlie Rose uh, actually interviewed uh, Manson in 86 uh, in a jailhouse interview for CBS. Um, so, but I am, we'll check and see to make sure it's Look on 60 at where minutes. Mike but, Wallace has gone oh with all gosh. of his interviews. I mean, yeah. th this is... Exactly. Uh, and this it, is what they do. This is the number one news show. Um, yeah. I, I, I think they do a great job at it, and I think they brought... Um, some might say that they brought the concerns that Marjorie Taylor Greene raises to an audience that perhaps needs to see it, probably hasn't had a full... Well, sense of exactly and, and, how her mind works. And by the way, uh, if anybody thinks that that Repu one of the leading Republicans of the House of Representatives telling America on a top rated news show that she believes Joe Biden is, is a pedophile. pedophile. Come on. If you think that helps Republicans in the next election in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, in Arizona, uh, in, in every single swing state, even in the Wisconsin uh, Supreme Court case tomorrow, if you don't think that doesn't further tarnish the Republican image nationwide up and down the ballot, well, you don't know politics. So uh, I, I, I think sunlight is the best disinfectant. Absolutely.